Hi, I'm Cameron Kirkconnell, and today for Salt Life, we're gonna be talking about pole spears and Hawaiian slings. It's one of the most primitive ways to hunt, and also one of the most rewarding because you have to learn the fish really well before you can get close enough to shoot them. And the pole spears and Hawaiian slings have limited range as opposed to a spear gun, so you have to get pretty close before you're able to take a shot. You have a heavy and a lighter pole spear. The heavier ones are gonna provide more punch when you shoot a fish, like a big grouper or an amberjack, and the lighter ones are gonna be a little bit faster and probably better suited for a hogfish or a mackerel, like a free-swimming fish. Then with the Hawaiian slings, same thing. You've got a lighter shaft that people usually use for shooting lobsters and small hogfish, and then the heavier shaft for, again, for the big groupers. So for the pole spears, we're gonna start off with this one, which is called a headhunter predator pole spear, and this is a pretty versatile pole spear. It's relatively light, it's got some flex in it, it's very fast and still has pretty good punch. Your basic parts of the pole spear, you got your slip tip, you got your injector rod, usually this is called the front section, you've got your grip, then your back section, and you see I've put another little grip here for letting small kids use it. This is how you're aiming, is with your thumb facing towards the front of the pole spear. And when I go to load, what I'll do is I'll grab the pole spear just forward of where I want to grip, and I'll turn the pole spear slightly, usually stop at a rest, then grab again, and hold there. And you can see it's putting a fair amount of strain on my hand, so to give yourself a break, you can hold it with your other hand like this, and you can also keep it tucked in close to your body. You want to make as small movements as possible when you're diving and hunting because it'll scare the fish off if you're you know, moving real fast. So everything is a nice smooth movement and extend and shoot. And when you shoot, you're just barely opening your hands and it's gonna slide out like that. When you're shooting, you wanna make sure that the rubber band that keeps this on has enough tension so that when you shoot, it just falls off. You don't want it to be too tight and stick or it's not gonna fall off when you shoot a fish. So you shoot the fish, slip tip toggles on the outside of the fish, fish is fighting, get it up into your hands. Now the difficulty is how to get the slip tip back out through a hole that is only as big as a slip tip. And depending on the angle of the shot and how thick the fish is, that can be very difficult. So what we do is we take the cable all the way off of the pole spear. So this slides up over the front of the pole spear. This cable comes back through that eye. And then lastly, this O-ring here, we take the cable back out through that O-ring and then the fish was here, you just slide the fish off the back of it. Once you've, you've shot, you've got the fish on. If you're in shallow enough water, usually you can just drag the fish up. If you have any, any doubts whatsoever, if you're gonna get to the surface though, let go. We like to hunt really big stuff with this. The biggest fish that we've shot with, with this setup here is a 220 pound yellowfin tuna. So you can't possibly manhandle that thing to the surface. So what we've done is we've figured out how to use buoys and line. The buoys are a pretty common thing for safety in spearfishing. They're always on the surface, even when you're free diving up and down. That way boats can see you, your boat can see you, other divers can see you. And when you shoot something big, you can let go of your spear or your spear gun and get to the surface. And then you can fight them from the surface. You want line that is gonna be at least a quarter more than the depth of water that you're gonna be in. So if I'm gonna be diving in 75 feet, this is gonna be 100 foot float line. So the back end here, I'm just gonna tie it onto the float. The other end is what's important. On my bands, I tie a basic loop of 1,000 pound Kevlar or Spectra, and then I take the clip and I put the clip on there. This one's called a, um, a Nomad, which is probably the one we use the most. So now, when this is on the pole spear, you're gonna have the band in your hand normal, and then I usually keep the line and my pinky finger on the outside like that. You're completely loaded up so that there's no pressure on the pole spear as you're shooting. Once you shoot, you can let go of everything. Pole spear's gonna go into the fish and away, the line's gonna run to you on the surface, and you can let the fish run, and then you can pull them up from the surface. Depending on the depth and depending on what fish you're hunting, I change when to load. A lot of times, I'll load right on the surface. I can see the fish, I'm not gonna take my eyes off of him. I'm gonna load this all the way up, I'm gonna take my breath, 
Eagle eyes, knock my snorkel out, dive down, and as I'm diving down, I'm gonna hold the pole spear like this to give myself a little bit of break on my right arm, and just as I get within range, I'm gonna extend it in one motion, I'm gonna shoot it. You can even make that little noise if you want, it helps. For a deeper dive, I would not load on the surface. I'd take a good deep breath, dive down, and when I got within 15 or 20 feet of the fish, in one smooth motion, I would load the, the pole spear like this, keep it nice and tucked, and then extend in one motion and shoot them again. So when you're hunting with a pole spear, or Hawaiian sling, or even a spear gun for that matter, one of the key things is how to fight the fish. You really don't wanna to have to make multiple dives to get one fish. It's not very efficient, and you're running the risk of losing the fish because he's banging around in the coral, going around corners, and also attracting sharks and other stuff that's gonna to wanna to eat him. So as soon as I shoot a fish, I try to put immediate pressure on that fish and keep them out of the rocks. With a float line, you can shoot the fish, get him even two feet off of the bottom, and then you can go to the surface and let the float line play out through your hands. So you're going up, but he's not going down. Then once you hit the surface, you can put the right amount of pressure on him and bring him up nice and smooth all the way to you. One of the most common challenges I see with people as they're landing fish is how to grab them. I'm gonna show you the easiest and safest technique to get them. As you pull the fish up, I don't want you to leave the surface. You pull up, get the spear in your hands, and then I want you to run your hand down the, down the slip tip cable like this until your hand is flat against the fish. Once your hand is flat against the fish, you can grab them like this if it's a snapper or a grouper and kind of pull them to you. Try to get your hands in their gills. Or if it's a mackerel or amberjack or other fish that has a big fork tail, you can grab their tail like this and then grab their head like that and put your hands in their gills. The second triggerless weapon we have here is the Hawaiian sling, which is a very, very simple setup, which is basically a rubber band, a handle, and a shaft with a flopper on it. So you load back like this, and you look kind of down it, and then you let go, and it shoots like that. When this shaft goes into a fish, it's gonna go through a fish like that, it drops down like that, and then the fish fights against it here. To get this out, what you'll do is you'll lay that shaft down and just barely get it back inside the fish, and then I just twist it, and it comes back out really easily. So the challenge with the Hawaiian sling has always been having to chase the fish down. Because once you shoot, this is a free shaft and the shaft is gonna be in the fish and you've gotta run it down and grab it. The other challenge is once you've shot it, the fish ends up sliding off the back sometimes. You'll see some on the market and Headhunter makes an amazing one that are rigged up with a line that has a slide ring on here so that when you shoot, there's a reel on the shooter here and a line tied to the shaft and you can shoot and let go. And it, it's really an amazing little system. The other really cool thing about these is when they're shooting lobsters, they'll go down, they'll shoot one lobsters, grab the shaft again, push the one lobster up on it, shoot again, and they can stack lobsters all the way up on here. And then they'll bring them up like this and you'll see the whole thing bowing because it's got 10 lobsters on it. It's a pretty incredible sight to see. The simplicity of this is very, very attractive. To, um, to people spearfishing and to get into spearfishing because they're not overwhelmed with guns. Same thing with the pole spears. It's a very, very simple setup. It's very effective as we've shown in shooting tunas and wahoo. And there's guys that have even shot, you know, gigantic groupers. One of the biggest groupers ever speared, 800 pounds, was shot with a setup just like this. In South Florida, we associate with the Hawaiian sling and pole spear very much because of the Bahamas. The Bahamas is a pole spear and Hawaiian sling only area. And in their laws, it says triggerless. So these are our two best options. Hunting with a pole spear gives new life to the sport and is so exciting. Whether you're in the Bahamas or you're in the United States or anywhere else you travel to spearfish, hunting with a pole spear will make you a better hunter and it's so much fun. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned a little bit about pole spears. Subscribe and watch more videos from the Salt Life Pros.